we conclude today chapter 52, which leaves us with one chapter in the first part of Tanya. We're speaking about Shechina, divine presence of God. Where is the divine presence of God? So today we're going to understand that in the spiritual realm. We're going to get some understanding what that means. We're talking about the divine presence of God, Shechina, which is also called the Queen. It's also called Nether Mother. It's called the World of Revelation. Or Malchus of Atsilos, the world of emanation. Malchus of that world. Now, as we explained, that the divine presence of God is like the sun that is so powerful that if it it, it, can, it needs to be contained, it needs to be um, needs to to um, be funneled, to be filtered. It needs a garment. The terminology, but these the the idea, in order that it will. Um, do its job of creating and creating a presence of God ultimately. So we're going to understand this in, in the three worlds, three created worlds, not the physical world yet. That will be the last chapter. But this physical world, I mean the spiritual worlds, right, And then in the last chapter, we'll understand what it means in this world. So, the divine presence, the Shekhinah, right, which the Shekhinah, again, Malchus, um, it comes into the Holy of Holies of each world as it progresses and it descends down in the creative process. So, what is the, the Shekhinah we explained is the divine presence of God. Where is it get filtered, contained, a garment, a garment is in the Holy of Holies of each world. What's the Holy of Holies of each world is the divine intelligence of each world. The world of Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya, as we will explain. That divine intelligence is the the Torah of that particular world. Because that's the divine intelligence. The divine intelligence of God is his Torah. Now, so, Malchus of Atzilus, which is the Shechina, divine presence, the power of God to create. And why is it that the power of God to create? Because Malchus is kingship, royalty. And the king, how does he, um, how does he, uh, what's the word, uh, how, how does he um, deal with his kingdom? His word is a command. Right, so it's the word of the king. He doesn't need to do anything. His word is like deed, you know, as done by his word. So likewise, what is it? The word of God, that is a creative force. That's Malchus. The speech of God, the breath of his mouth. And we can also understand that in, just in human terms, our intelligence is only revealed because of our speech. We speak intelligently, you know, who the person is, you know. Chacham, mahu, aimer. Chacham, what is he? What he says, right? How do you know the person's wise? You don't know. Well, when they reveal their wisdom, how do they reveal their wisdom? Well, in their speech. That's how they reveal it. So God, how does he reveal the divine wisdom? Through what he says, meaning how he creates the word of God that is the creative force that reveals the divine intelligence. 
So, Malchus of, uh, of, of Atzilus, which is the light revealing the Ein Soif of God, right? So this is meaning, because it's the Ein Soif of God that has the power of creating. So it becomes manifest in God's speech and reveals the godliness in each and every single world. And that's the revealing of godliness is called Shrina. Divine presence. So let's understand that, how it works. So Malchus of Atzilus, again, the divine speech, which is Malchus, the Shrina, the divine presence, as it's revealed in speech, right? As speech reveals the intelligence of an individual, so it reveals the divine intelligence of God. And in each world, it reveals it in a different way. So, Malchus of Atzilus now comes down, clothes itself, remember, it has to clothe itself in order that it shouldn't be all powerful and therefore just be like the sun that, you know, is the rays of sun within the sun and everything gets sort of incorporated and doesn't have any creative power to create something. So, so Malchus of Atzilus now closed itself in, in where? Well, in the Holy of Holies in the world of Bria which is the divine intelligence of that world, which is Chachma Bina Vedas, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, Chabad, of that world, right? Now, so that's the Holy of Holies um, in the world of Bria. That Holy of Holies, then, meaning the divine intelligence of that world, clothes itself further Right, clothing, remember, is now concealing, as clothes conceal a person, right? In Malchus of that world. And therefore, because it clothes itself in Malchus of that world, now Malchus, which is the word of God, meaning the creative force of God, what does it do? Well, it creates. What's it creating there? Souls, angels that are of the world of Bria. Higher forms of souls, lofty souls that are coming from there, right? And from there also, Malchus of Bria, again, which is enclosed in it, the Shechina, which is Malchus of Atzilus, the world of emanation, which, pre, which itself now, it clothed itself. So it's like, different layers, right, of the Chabad of that world, which was the Holy of Holies of that world. And now it closes itself in Malchus of Bria, and from there we derive what we call the Gemara, the Talmud. Meaning, Malchus, Malchus of Bria is doing two things. It's creating things, and it is something. Just like a human being, you are, and then there's what you do. So Malchus of Atzilus, I mean of, of, of Atzilus, it comes down, clothes itself as it's descending into the world of Bria, the world of creation. It's descending in the Holy of Holies, meaning the divine intelligence of that world. Right, that is, and that's the holiness of that world. But it doesn't, it's not manifest, it's not expressed until it's expressed through speech. In speech, there's two dimensions. There's speech in what you, the creative force of God in that world that it's creating, and that's angels and souls. But then there's the speech that's an expression of the person. And what is that? Expression of their divine wisdom. Not a, an expression of what they do, but who they are. So what's Malchus of Bria? What is that divine entity that it's expressing? 
Gemara, the Talmud. Why the Talmud? Because Bria is and in particular is the the capacity of the divine intelligence that should be understood. Now, there's divine intelligence that is in the world of Atsilus. Right? Because there's Chabad in Atsilus. But that's intelligence that's beyond comprehension. It's divine intelligence beyond comprehension. But then there's divine intelligence as it comes down into the world of Bria. As is in the Holy of Holies in that world, meaning the Chabad of that world, that becomes manifest, just like my intelligence is only manifest when I speak. Hopefully, I speak with intelligence. <laughs> I hope I speak with intelligence that you understand what I'm saying in the teachings of the Altar Rebbe. It's his intelligence that I'm just hopefully expressing. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Express intelligence that's here, that's manifest the wisdom of the teachings. That's what I'm doing, or trying to do at least. I hope well enough that you're getting it. If you're multitasking, you're not going to get it. If you're really focused, then you will get it. You will. So it's it's manifesting that divine intelligence in in two ways in the word of God of that in that world, which is Malchus of Bria. Remember, vested in Malchus of Bria, how could it do anything? Malchus of Bria. Because vested in it is the divine intelligence of that world. Vested in that and divine intelligence of Chabad of that of Abriya is Malchus of Atzilus. Malchus of Atzilus has what in it? The divine intelligence of Atzilus that what's in that in, in that? Ain't Saif, God himself. Right? But it's layered or garments. Why the garments? Because the Ain't Saif itself is beyond. Even divine intelligence, you can't even, ain't so if you can't say is beyond, because beyond means it's relative to something. What you can say is beyond is atzilos, divine intelligence, it's beyond us. Right? So now, how am I going to have any um, kind of relationship to divine intelligence that my mind can grasp? Well, that's the expression of malchus the word of God, which is the Gemara in the world of Bria. That's already a contracted, a garment that's concealing in such a way that it created a garment that gives me the capability to now comprehend divine intelligence. At the same time, the manifestation of the divine intelligence, which is a manifestation of the Ain Saif ultimately, in a way that we can comprehend, because it's garments that are now concealing on that light that it's capable, that light that I could get it. That same power of the Word of God is also a creative power of creating things like souls and angels in the world of Bria. And those Souls and, and angels that are being that are created in that world, and other things like it's a world, so it's got you know um, palaces and structures and things that are created, not physical ones, spiritual ones, of course, right? Like Gan Eden. The higher level of the Garden of Eden is in the world of Bria. It's a creation from Malchus. The angels likewise, not and, and the souls, not in the same matter of creation. It's a bit, there's distinctions that we're not going to go into now, but now from there it goes down further. Malchus of Malchus of what? Bria. What's in Malchus of Bria? What's behind it all? What's inside of it? What's garments of the layers? The Holy of Holies of that world, meaning the divine intelligence of that world. 
Chabad of Bria. And what's in Chabad of Bria? That's vested in it. Then which means means it's vested further in Malchus of Bria, of Bria that we're talking about. It is Malchus of Atzilus, the world of emanation. And Malchus of Atzilus, ultimately that the Ain Saif is God himself, the limitlessness of God vested in it. Limitlessness of God, can't even say it's beyond. Nothing. It's, we call it like nothing. So that's what, something from nothing, right? So beyond. And yet, so but it garments itself in a way that now we can get some inkling of God himself. He's giving us a... Uh, comprehension. That's the Gemara. That's why the Gemara is about debate and discussion of the reasoning of the law, the reasoning of the mitzvah, the reasoning of understanding. Then it comes and invests itself in the next world, Yitzira. Yitzira, the world of formation. What's vested from? Malchus Abria and everything that's in it, as we explained, garmented in it, it now vests itself, garments itself in the Holy of Holies of that world. What's that? The Chabad of Yitzira. Right? The Chabad of Yitzira. Meaning the intelligence of that world the whole and that becomes the holy of holy of that world right so it does two things there malchus remember it's a creative force so the creative force of it and what it is what the creative force it does it also creates souls and also angels the word of god in that world creative force in that world Spiritual world of Yitzira. And all of the Heicholas, the, the, uh, everything else that's of that world, of course. But what is Malchus? Not what it does, creates, but what is the expression? What is it expressing? Well, the Holy of Holy is that world, right? The intelligence of that world, just like my speech, again, reveals my intelligence. The lack of it. <laughs> right? So what is in that world, the world of formation, the world of Yitzira? What is it revealing? What divine intelligence is re- revealing? The Mishnah. The Mishnah is the adjudication of Jewish law. The emotional, which is the um, divine emotion. Emotion is three emotion, three basic emotions. Chesed. Right? Loving kindness, gvura, um, refrain. Because of fear, you refrain, you hold back, right? Awe, it's a movement in rather than a movement out. That which those two basic things are. Movement out means towards something, to embrace the thing. Means you're embracing this thing, meaning because it's either kosher, valid, or pure. That's halachic rendering. Or if you're not embracing, because out of the concept of refrain, gvura, you're holding back. <gasps> right? It's holding back is because it's impure. It's not kosher. It's invalid. That's the world of these here, which is divine emotion that's being expressed primarily in that world which is the Mishnah. The Mishnah is, is about the law itself. Now, what's vested in the Mishnah over there, which is an expression of Malchus, the, the, of Malchus of Yitzira, that's expressing the Holy of Holies of that world, the, the divine intelligence of that world. What's the divine intelligence invested in, vested in that is all the way up again to the Ein Saif, as we explain. So in it is also the reasoning, which is the Gemara that is revealed in the world of Bria. But as it comes down into the Mishnah, is there divine intelligence in the Mishnah or is it just the adjudication? Well, of course it's there, but that's not what's revealed. What's revealed is only the adjudication. Hillel says, 
This is the law. Shammai says, this is the law. That's like the Mishnah, right? Yeah, Rabbi Akiva says, the law is like this. And Rabbi Shmuel says, the law is like that, right? One thing from Ches and one Gvura. Or a combination, too, can be Tiferes. Now, in the Mishnah, you the reasons aren't explained. But is the reasoning there? Yeah. Alluded to, hinted to, um, inferred by the language. But it's not apparent. It's not revealed. Because there is only revealed kosher, not kosher, valid, invalid, pure, impure. Where is it revealed? In the world, higher than it. Because it's the reasoning that gives ultimately to the adjudication. The intelligence leads to, right? Our intelligence should lead to our heart. When I know that this is good, I embrace it. When I know this is bad, I refrain from it. So when I know that this is appropriate, oh, so I can embrace this now in my life. It's kosher. It's valid. It's it's pure. When I know that it's not, the reasoning, so it develops the emotional response, that's, that's the idea of the Mishnah. So the, it's concealed the rationale of the laws of the Gemara. The Gemara learns it out from the Mishnah. Or that's, you know, they argue it out from there. Absolutely. And then it descends to the final world, which is the world of Asiya, the world of action, which is the, actually, the holy writings, like the five books of Moses, Tanakh, Torah, Nevi, Metsuvin, the written word of Torah, that it comes down to the world of Asiya, the world of action, that it's actually in writing, because writing is an action, as opposed to the Mishnah is, was the oral Torah, the Gemara is the oral Torah, that it was only orally, transmitted until it was at one point written down but it was all initially it was only the oral we, we still call it the oral torah today even though it's in writing because it's part of that oral tradition as opposed to the written word which the word of asiya means the world of action well writing is an action as opposed to speech right relatively speaking so there it becomes the Holy of Holies all the way up to the Ain't Safe, all vestiture. It comes down in a way that it is now um, coming down, meaning holiness is coming down. The Word of God is coming down. That even in its writing, it embraces holiness. For this, the Altar of says in a note, we can understand now what we say every day in, in the in Ashrei. Malchus cha malchus kodei lamim. Malchus, your kingdom, is the kingdom of all worlds. Your kingdom. What's your kingdom? Malchus vatsilus, because that's the emanation. That's all, That's beyond creation. right? That's godliness. That is beyond creation. Malchus vatsilus, which is the shechina that we spoke about, that we began with, right? And we learned in previous classes. Right? That's the shechina. As it vests itself and comes down and expresses itself. And create a force within each and every world is the malchus of each world. Malchus ha, your malchus, malchus vatsilus, that's yours because it's emanation of God. Is the malchus, is the royalty, is the word of God, the creative force of God, the, ex, the manifestation of godliness of each world, as we just explained it. And this then is expressed in how in the five books of Moses. And that's why we got big Jews have big noses, not me so much, but so we should put them in the five books of Moses. Is the ten utterances of creation, God's speech. Right? In Torah it's called the Word of God. By Yahimir Hashem, and God said, Let there be light, let there be this, let there be this, so on. Right? That is the way it's expressed in the written word. The word and the breath of God in the oral Torah it's expressed as in different dimensions. We have the Gemara calls it Shechina, the sages of the Talmud, the Kabbalists call it Queen and other Mother, 
and also the world of revelation and so on and so forth. Ashkina, that light that's beyond the world in the mouth of Atsilas is the force and the word of God that is the creative force of the world and the expression of the Ein Soif in each world, which means the divine wisdom of that world. And what we have learned now is what that means in the spiritual realms, in the spiritual worlds. We will continue with this idea in the next chapter on what that means in this world. So we understand what the divine presence is in each world now, is the divine intelligence, the Holy of Holies of that world that's expressed in Malchus, which is further vested in it and gives it the power to create of that, to create in that world. What is it in this world? Stay tuned. Stay tuned for more. Any questions, any comments? I want questions on this, not digressions, if you don't mind. If you don't mind, let just uh, let's. I want to make sure that what we learned here. The simcha does the shechina of Hashem stay in us or? with us daily as long as we stay with him in the presence absolutely well that, well, that again that's going to be um forthcoming and and in the next few days we're going to know more about that yes absolutely correct i hope this was clear this it was a it was a bit um technical and it was a bit um abstract but it, it you know important You talk of world. Explain what or what worlds? Not clear what what your question is. A life and you soul. Not certain what the question is. All right. I don't see any more questions. We're going to learn Rambam now. Learn the laws of. Um, of this coven of idolatry, powerful we learned, and um, it's going to be on Zoom. It's going to be on Chabad on Facebook only. On Zoom and Chabad ZK Facebook, come uh, and join us. I'm going to open it up. We'll start in about five minutes or so, but I'm going to open up the Zoom right away, so you can uh, get on and uh, and join um join the continue the journey with us i'm rabbi ronnie fine come to you from chabad Kadesh, Montreal, Canada. it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you tanya Hello.